Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys taking a little time out of your day to watch the video as usual. And today I'm going to show you guys five of my favorite lures to use in May that I can bet probably most all of you have never fished before. Um, you hear a lot of guys that have these YouTube channels, they do videos on like the best, five best baits in May, that type of stuff. These are the five baits, Every, and everybody knows what those baits are, you know, wacky rigs and stuff like that. These are five baits that I guarantee most people have never thrown. They're highly productive, and I'm gonna tell you guys the situations I use them in specifically. It's definitely gonna help you catch a few more bass. And real quick before we get started, just wanna remind you guys, if anybody out there is interested in booking an on the water lesson with me, I'm taking booking trips right now through the later spring and summer. Um, if you're interested in that, just shoot me a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Block, a professional angler, and I'll shoot you all that information. And also I'll include the bait works link in the description. You guys can probably find some of these baits there. Okay guys, let's go over a little bit here. Uh, some of my favorite, favorite baits for the May time of the year um, that most people just don't fish. I'm gonna start and go through one through five with them. So first one I'm gonna go through is, um, I've talked about this in one other video before. A lot of you guys may not have seen it. This is an old school giant Rapala. This is like, this is the number 18 Rapala. It's over seven inches long. Guys, I'm telling you what, when this, when these fish get off the beds, and if you've got a lake that has water visibility of over three feet, this is one of the most deadly baits that you can throw to catch big ones on after the spawn. Um, it's a sort of an Ozark secret. We use it around here, but guys, I have ripped them all over the country with it. I've ripped them at Lake Norman on it, Lake Murray, Lake Lanier, um, down at Sam Rayburn, Texas, Lake Seminole. I lost a 10 pounder on this thing at Lake Seminole in May in a Bassmaster tournament years ago. It got me hung up in the top of a tree. I have just whacked them on this thing in May. Um, thing about this bait, it's very difficult to fish because you have to jerk it extremely hard. Um, you guys know I fish all my jerk baits on spinning rods. I don't all with this one. I fish this bait on a flipping stick with 20 pound test line and I rip it almost like I'm saltwater fishing. Just jerk it as hard as I can. By the end of the day, you will know you've been fishing because it's a, it's a big workout. But post spawn guys, they will bite this thing. I'm telling you right, best conditions if you got some type of cloudy, windy day with it. Um, next one I wanna go over, this is actually the one that was in the thumbnail. This is a, not a mega bass, a mega bait Charlie swim bait. And this has got, it's got a fixed lip on it like this and it works just like a crankbait, guys. They make it in a lot of different sizes. This is the smallest one, this is a three inch. In the post spawn and May time here, guys, you can take this little mega bait and you can swim it along the side of docks, you know, floating docks, pier docks, something like that. And those, a lot of those bass that are garden fry, they will hammer this thing. This is one of my favorite May time baits to fish. Um, I work it just like a crankbait. I'll fish it on like 12 to 15 pound test line you know, some type of a seven foot rod. It casts pretty easy. Um, and it's, it's not, it's a swim bait, but it's a, like a, a finesse swim bait that you don't see much. I don't understand why this bait hasn't caught on so much, man. I've just caught a ton of fish on it. So that's another one that I really like. Okay, the next one is another swim bait. This is a three inch small Huddleston swim bait. This thing right here is like, it's like a thread fin shad resemblance. You can see how narrow it is. Um, there's a lot of pros guys that use this bait and don't talk about it. I know Scott Martin did really good on this bait, uh, down at Lake Norman one year. I have just ripped them everywhere I've went in May. And again, this, this for me is a sort of a shad spawn, uh, fry garden type deal. I like to fish this around shallow riprap. I like to fish it around corners of docks. I like to throw it back in like the back of coves where bass have recently spawned and they may be garden fry. Um, this thing's got a real subtle tail action. It throws really easy and you reel it extremely slow just underneath the surface and this tail just ba just barely kicks on it like that, like a little, you know, shad. But look at that thing. It looks just like a, a live shad, soft plastic. It's got a fixed hook in it and it's got a kill weight on it. But um, this thing is awesome in the, month, uh, in the month of May. Okay, that's three. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Zoom Z-Drop Worm. Now this is this is like Zoom made this bait. It's basically designed for drop shot, but the way that I like to fish it is on a jig head, just like that. Uh, most of the time, I don't use a weed guard. I'll fish it, the jig head without a weed guard. 
but I'll put like an eighth ounce head, rig the hook exposed in there. And again, I'm fishing this thing in and around spawning type areas, secondary points, main lake points. If I have water visibilities over three feet, this is a great bait to catch the finicky post spawners. I'll fish this on those days that are really tough, bright and sunny. It works really good on lakes that have a big spotted bass population, um, clear water bait. So this is one of the, the top made baits that I like to use. Hold on, I gotta get Elijah here. Okay guys, I'm back. Elijah busted his uh, trailer on his boat, his toy boat trailer out there, had to put the fire out. And then, okay, we've been over four here. The last one I wanna talk about is the Mega Bass Zero Griffin, guys. This is a zero, it's, it's like the one minus. It runs less than 12 inches deep. It's a small bait. Guys, this is awesome in the late uh, part of May, like, like, you know, third week of May, fourth week of May. When those fish get shallow and they start, um, there's a couple different things there. They're starting to move out. Some of the, there's some late fry garters or some bass feeding, uh, uh, feeding on the shad spawn. And then there's some bass that are beginning to feed on spawning bluegill. When you get that situation, this zero griffin is an awesome lure in May time. And what I do is I cover water with this thing right up on the bank. If you have some type of shallow vegetation like water willow or shallow millfoil, it's even better. You don't have to have it. You can have just bare rock and wood. But what I do is I keep my rod tip low and burn this thing pretty fast. And I, I try to, to make it where there's like just a little wake behind it, throw it right up on the bank. And if there's any shallow aggressive fish, which there normally are at that time of May, they will come up and hammer this thing just like a topwater lure. It's just a great bait to fish during the month of May. And I usually fish it again like on 15 pound tests. So there it is guys, my favorite May baits that you probably never fished before. The first one is the Big Giant Rapala. The second one is the Mega Bait Charlie. Third one is this little bitty three inch Huddleston. The Mega Bass Z Drop Worm on a jig head. And the Mega Bass, or excuse me, the Zoom Z Drop Worm on a jig head. And the Mega Bass uh, Zero Griffin Crankbait. So give them a try if you guys wanna try something different that will work, a lot of people don't fish. These are proven things. I've caught bass on these lures for decades and I know they'll produce some good ones for you. And I hope it, hope it does for you as well. So thanks again for tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button and we'll be back later.